now that we've seen uh, a lot of the DLC coming out so far for the Shadow of the Blade, I want to focus on the FLC with Repense de Lyonnaise. Um, what we're going to do today is read through the 5th edition army book's entire lore excerpt of her. We're going to talk about her special rules and how they've actually made a really awesome translation into Total War Warhammer. Um, I'm really excited to see this lord or lady added into the game because it's going to be fun to play Bretonia on the Vortex map and in a new different location on the Mortal Empires map. So I think of all the lords I'm most excited for Repulse because I think it's going to be a, a lot of fun. So let's read this lore and uh, kind of go through this and see what, what she's all about. She has a really rich history and she extends into the White Dwarfs and the nice thing about her is even though she hasn't been a mainstay beyond the 5th edition. She's had a presence in the 6th edition, 7th edition books, even in the 8th edition Warhammer um, rule book and in the Warriors of Chaos book. So even though she hasn't had an actual model or placement beyond 5th, she's still kind of remembered more or less. And I think this kind of plays hand in hand with Games Workshop's release of the Sisters of Battle this very same day. I think that they kind of said, hey, let's bridge those gaps, let's cross market. Uh, fantasy, they can have their own <laughs> blessed saint or Celestian saint with uh, Rapunzel Leoness. So here is the lore for Rapunzel de Leoness. Rapunzel de Leoness won fame as the dreaded Demoiselle de Gere, who rallied the battered armies of Bretonia during the kingdom's darkest hour. This was when King Louis the Brave was slain in battle before Corone, fighting a vast chaos horde invading Bretonia from beyond the Sea of Claws. Louis's army was all but destroyed. Corone was besieged, and to make matters worse, the king's heir was still a child unable to lead the nation. Chaos raiders spread out across the land, burning and destroying. Everywhere knights were hacked down as they bravely defied impossible odds. At this dark moment, amid the smoking ruins of a small village in remote Leoness, Rapunza saw the Lady of the Lake. The lady appeared to speak, saying, Rapunza, Rapunza, rid my land of these foul foes, they do offend me with their presence. Rapunz was no more than 17 years of age, a humble shepherdess who was devoutly religious. Inspired by her vision, she donned armor that she found on a slain knight and grabbed the reins of a terrified war horse, which was running loose. She broke open the reliquary of the village grail chapel and took up the sword she found within it. Snatching a tapestry hung on the wall, she fastened it to a lance and rode forth to rally the scattered and disheartened knights of Leoness. When the retreating knights saw a mere damsel bravely setting off to do battle with the mighty warriors of chaos and one who was undoubtedly favored by the lady of the lake they were shamed and felt honor bound to follow her death or glory while the ramparts of corona were cracking under the impact of battering rams of the chaos lord word was brought of a new bretonian army approaching fast and trampling beneath their hooves any foe in their path as the great doors were about to give way, the banner of the dreaded Demoiselle appeared leading a great host of knights arrayed in a single lance head formation. They cleft their way through the Chaos ranks, shattering the Chaos army until Rapunz was face to face with the Chaos Lord himself. When he raised his great sword above his grimacing visage, he was momentarily dazed by Rapunz's radiant aura, and she beheaded him with a single sword stroke. Corone was saved, and the remnants of the enemy were pursued to the sea and justly put to death. In gratitude, Louis the Young bestowed upon Rapunz not only all the honors of knighthood, but also the dukedom of Leoness. So you get this character that is very true to a, a Joan of Arc type of story, and uh, one of her, or her, I guess one of her chief confidants, or her, I guess her right-hand man, Henry de Le Mastif, is also portrayed in Total War Warhammer and in Warhammer. Uh, we get this character that is very similar to the Gilles Le Ray of the, the Joan of Arc lore. Of course, Gilles Le Ray goes on to become a serial murderer, but that's neither here nor there. In uh, Total War Warhammer, we see this character that is going to be a legendary hero, a legendary paladin alongside Rapunz de Leonès. And with Rapunz kind of being the, um, the character that's more similar, uh, kind of allied to a questing knight, we're going to get this great sword cav unit and i'm really excited to see this kind of brought to the fore when we take a look at the fifth edition for Rapunz, we see a character that has uh the knight's virtue obviously because she's a knight and she also has the virtue of devotion now in addition she has a special rule the halo of maidenly wrath 
Now the way that this uh, worked in uh, Tabletop was, the power of the Lady of the Lakes shines from upon us like a halo. Her sword and armor glow with the brilliant light of divine retribution. Her eyes shine with terrible judgment, and her voice cries forth damnation upon her enemies. So she causes fear, and then uh, that's it. She just causes fear. Um, not as cool in Tabletop. But again, this is 5th edition. This is a way different edition. So the way Total War sees this, it sees this as this big explosion, right, of her just kind of um, heralding the, the the name of the lady at the same time, uh, blinding every anyone on her path. So we get this really awesome, very flavorful, characteristic interpretation of this special rule in Total War Warhammer. And I think it's very cool. It's very exciting. I really enjoy the uh, kind of stance that they took with Raponce in Total War that, that is kind of different than what we get in the actual rules in a very true-to-form way. And that's something that Creative Assembly has done time and time again, right? With all of these characters saying, well, that's kind of lackluster. Or we can't really do that because that's not a rule in Total War Warhammer. Here's how we're going to interpret it. And I've always really enjoyed how they take those twists and kind of uh, bring them to light. So uh, the big thing for Rapunzel is that she is a battle standard bearer. The BSB, as it was called in Tabletop, for your army. Or she at least could be. And with that she gets two magic items. Two magic items that we see in Total War Warhammer that I'm gonna be, not gonna lie, I'm really excited to see how their quest battles pan out if they're both quest battle locked magic items. The first is the Fleur de Lis banner. This banner bears the Fleur de Lis of the Lady of the Lake and was taken from the walls of the same Grail Chapel where Raponce found the Sword of Lioness. The touch of the lady has made the banner as bright and as shining as the day it was stitched by the maidens of Leoness. So what this helped for in Tabletop is in 5th edition there were, there were cards that you used. There was a bunch of just unnecessary rules. And it helped out with your combat results. To kind of paraphrase at least. Well, the way that this is interpreted in Total War, we see this as a flat bonus to both melee attack and melee defense of 9. Which is very powerful. I mean, even if you don't have her cavorting around with a unit of questing knights or, or grail guardians, even if you kind of have her like cycle charging into the front line, she can still give a lot of benefit to your men at arms, to your foot squires. So there's a lot of really cool, again, interpretation of this rule. It's, it's really cool to see this here because since this is a 5th edition model with 5th edition rules, they are archaic and they're very... I don't want to say bad, but they're they're not good. <laughs> the the way power cards and everything worked back then was a, was a real big hassle, and I like that uh, Creative Assembly kind of flinched through all that and was able to pull out um, a really solid and really good interpretation with Fleur de, the Fleur de Lee banner. Now the other item here is the Sword of Leoness. The Lady of the Lake led Raponce to a Grail Chapel where she took up this ancient warblade, the sword of a devout and honorable knight of olden times. The lady guided Raponce well, for the weapon has great power over enemy magic. So, this thing kind of really has to do more with um, negating magical powers and kind of wards against magic uh, as a whole. So, they kind of went a different way with this. They kind of paid a little more um, attention to the fact that she beheaded a Chaos Lord with one fell swoop. So, with that... The Sword of Leoness in Total War Warhammer gets that massive increase to weapon damage as well as the AP characteristic is um, uh, uh, attached to the weapon. So she just kind of is able to really pour out a ton of damage with the 40 melee attack bonus that she also gets from the, the sword as well. With I think it's like an 8 or 12 second uh, uh, timeline on it or, or uh, duration on it. So a really cool and different interpretation for Rapunzel. And she doesn't have a crazy lore. She's not like this insane kind of character that has kind of weaved in and out. But she has had one that it has kind of like lasted the test of time, I guess you could say. Um, there's interpretations of her in the 7th edition book where um, it's in 2007. Uh, Battle of Coron, led by Raponce de Lyonnais, the Damoiselle de Gier, the Bretonians defeat the forces of chaos. Though but a young maiden, Raponce de Lyonnais slays Lord Karen, K-H-A-R-A-N, in single combat. His army soon scatters. That's in 7th edition in Warriors of Chaos. She's in the 8th edition Warhammer, uh, Warriors of Chaos book. In the 6th edition Bretonian book, she always kind of stays in the 2006-2007 timeline of both of those books throughout the uh, continuity of Warhammer, which is really cool. Like we even see in the, uh, here's the 8th edition 
uh, Warriors of Chaos, the Battle of, Lam of Lamentations. A vast plague fleet, so foul that it leaves the sea black in its wake, makes anchor off Bretonia. Led by the Chaos Lord Karen the Blighted, the legions of Corn and Nurgle defeat the Knights of Caron and lay siege to that city. Repense de Lyonnais, the Damoiselle de Gere slays Lord Karen in a single combat, or in single combat, and his army soon scatters. So, you get again this kind of continuity across two books, across all these editions. So it's really kind of cool to see her in um, the game throughout the long haul, right? Uh, we see her in a uh, in another little glimpse around in, in the ac our actual year 2004 with a, a kind of a nod as it talks about the city of Leoness itself, um, giving her showing her model off from the olden days of the White Dwarf. Now Henry Le Mastiff here or Massif, Mastiff, you're not a dog. Uh, Le Massif, he really only has a mention in that White Dwarf. Um, so Henry Le Massif is a hero, a, a Grail Knight, as it were, and he has the virtue of valor, and he wields the Sword of Heroes. Uh, we do not see him wielding the Sword of Heroes, though, in Total War Warhammer. We see him with a Charmed Shield. We see him with his uh, Guardian ability, and he gets uh, the typical kind of uh, kit you would expect from a Paladin. So... He does have a lot of really cool characteristics. His biggest one, though, is, of course, the ability to ride a hippogriff, which other paladins do not. So it's fun to see Henry Le Mastiff, Mastiff, God, I always want to say Mastiff, uh, come into the game. But probably the coolest thing from the White Dwarf is we also get the name of uh, Raponce de Leoness's force, Chevalier de Leoness. That's where we get that uh, that naming mechanic for her is, is directly from that uh uh, number 210 of the White Dwarf, in which we get all this great information. Uh, she's rehashed in, in that uh, White Dwarf ag again with the exact same rules, going through her magic items, her special rules, all that kind of action there as well. So, as a whole, I'm, I'm really excited to see Rapunz come to the game. I think she's going to be a lot of fun. It'll be fun to kind of see where they place her on the map. Is she going to be in Northern Araby with the rest of the Bretonians? Are they going to give her something in like Nagaron or something, Nagaroth, something like that, where she's far to the Northwest? I think it'll be a really fun to see that campaign kind of play itself out. In addition to that, I'm really excited to see where they place her in the Mortal Empires campaign. So I think that this addition to the Vortex campaign is going to be a lot of fun just to be able to play Bretonia. And she's a very cool and different character, right? With the other three characters, the legendary lords for Bretonia, we have characters that are magic focused uh, with the Fey Enchantress. We have uh, the king, which is a, kind of a support, but more of a, a heavy hitting character. And then we have uh, Alberic, which is kind of, he is who he is. With this character, we get a questing knight style character. So it's a little bit different. And she's going to be definitely a little bit more of a duelist uh, that can really stand there and do a lot of burst damage at the same time support and help out with her uh, banner characteristics from the Fleur de Lis banner. But guys, I'm so excited to uh, talk about more stuff coming out for the Shadow and the Blade. Hopefully this gave you a good lore recap, or at least lore idea of who Raponsa Leoness is and how she fits into the grand lore of Bretonia. Um, but as always, thank you so much for watching here today. Have a good one and take care.